Good evening, universe. Tonight I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in March. The first thing I read was The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Rebels There by Catherine Valent. This is a sequel, so it follows the girl who circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making, also by Catherine Valent, obviously. This is book two in her five book Fairyland series. Without any spoilers, what the series is about is basically a girl who goes to Fairyland. Her name is September and she goes to Fairyland and embarks on all sorts of mystical quests. The writing is very whimsical and brings me a lot of joy. The characters are really fun and the setting is really nice and it feels so real and vivid and different and I absolutely loved reading book two in this series. It had some great emotional beats. I think I liked book one just a little bit better. There were a couple of things that I enjoyed from the first book a little bit more, but I still loved book two and I'm really excited to continue with the series. When she's not in Fairyland, September lives in Nebraska with her mother and I believe the backdrop, it's definitely set in the past and I believe the backdrop is that World War II is going on. But most of the book follows September's adventures in Fairyland, although there are some reflections on her life on earth as well. I highly recommend this book if you're looking for something really light and whimsical. It is middle grade. I don't think I said that before, but it is a middle grade story. September is I think 13-ish, somewhere in there. It's really just a delightful middle grade. It was a great kind of palate cleanser for me. I was feeling a little bit reading slumpy and for some reason, I had tried to read this book a couple of times before and only gotten through the beginning, not gotten very far. But this time I finally read it all the way through and I am so glad I did. I loved it so much. And like I said, I'm really excited for book three. I'm just realizing that this video is going to have a lot of sequels in it. So I'm going to do my best to be spoiler free. But the next book is Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor. Like I said, this is another sequel. It is book two in the Magnus Chase trilogy by Rick Riordan. And this trilogy follows Magnus Chase and his dealings with the Norse pantheon. So we've got like Loki, Thor, Odin, all of those guys. He has allies in a Valkyrie named Sam, a dwarf named Blitzen, and an elf named Hearthstone. And all of these allies are really great. He gets some new ones in book two. I definitely enjoy this series a lot. I love Magnus as a main character. I was never as interested in the Norse pantheon as I was in the Greek pantheon. So for that reason, I like the Percy Jackson series just a little bit better, but I still love this one. Um, like I said, Magnus is a great protagonist and he feels different enough from Percy that it feels like a fresh new series. This book follows Magnus's adventure as he tries to locate the missing hammer of Thor. And meanwhile, in the background, there are machinations happening from our big bad that is introduced in book one. I really enjoyed some of Magnus's struggles in this one. We get some cameo appearances, some crossover cameos from particular people in the Percy Jackson series. So that is very fun. And I'm really looking forward to book three. This series is great if you want something that's Percy Jackson liked. It takes place in Boston, I think, but a lot of it takes place in other worlds that align with the Norse pantheon and those ideas. And so it was a really fun, fast paced adventure. If that's what you're looking for, this is again, middle grade, like all of Rick Riordan's books. And I recommend it for a quick, fun, lighthearted, humorous adventure. I had been having a little bit of trouble really settling in with books. So I was specifically looking for lighthearted, funny, whimsical things that would keep me reading. So those two books were really great for getting me out of that slump, which was great because there was another book that I have been struggling to finish. I started reading it, I guess, in January. That's what I wrote in my story graph. And I just finished it this month. And that is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is, again, book two in a series. This is book two of the Legend Born cycle following Legend Born, which was very well known when it came out. This was really highly anticipated by a lot of people, including myself. I was really excited to start reading this. 
And I definitely liked Legendborn more than its sequel. Pretty heavily, I would say. What the series is about is that there is a teenage girl who has just lost her mother. Her name is Bree. And she is grieving really heavily for her mom and then goes away to like a young college program. So like an advanced sort of program. And she is also black in the South on a campus that has, you know, some celebrations of like plantation owners and things like that. So there's a lot of discussion of race and racism and inequality in that way in the book while also being about fighting demons. And... Thirdly, also being about King Arthur. So the descendants of King Arthur and the Round Table all have special, basically superpowers, particular abilities, and they use these abilities in order to fight demons. The first book was wonderful. I loved it so much. It was really fast paced. It was really interesting. I loved the reveals at the end. The last like 150 pages, I would say, was really where the book shone. This one was kind of all over the place for me. There were a lot of plot lines going on in Bloodmarked, and I didn't feel that they were very cohesively woven. I was frustrated with some of the characters and the character choices. I understand this book was kind of expanding the worldview and stuff like that, but I just didn't really enjoy it. It felt a little bit of a slog to get through. And I was so frustrated by the end that I wasn't sure if I was going to continue on to book three. Now that I've had some time to reflect, I still think I'm going to because I feel like hopefully this was just a kind of second book sort of struggle and book three will really come around and end things in a really satisfying way. But I was pretty disappointed with this one. It felt uh, a little bit too long and there were just a lot of moments that felt like, okay, we're dealing with so many things and now we're just adding another thing that we're dealing with. Nothing has been resolved yet. It's just yet another something that we have to deal with. And it felt a little bit frazzling. And also there was less of a focus on the sort of college academia area, which was upsetting because I really liked that backdrop and I liked those reflections and stuff like that. And so this shift in the setting just didn't really work for me. There were definitely some parts that I did really love. I like following Brie as a main character. I like a lot of the other main characters that we got introduced to in book one. There were some really heart-wrenching moments that were really well done. And the continued discussions on race and inequality was great. But overall, I found it a bit unsatisfying. Like I said, I will probably still be reading the third one because I want to see how it ends. But I probably won't be buying the third one. Instead, I'll probably check it out from the library just because I don't think it's a trilogy that I feel like I need to own. And the last book I read was Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And this book I actually started near the beginning of March. And I kind of read it slowly throughout the whole month, but I really loved it. It is a Regency romance, but with fairies. So basically the main character who we follow, Dora, loses half of her soul. A fairy steals it at the very beginning of the book. And so she lives her whole life with only half a soul. This was so whimsical and beautiful and romantic. It was everything that I wanted from it. I really enjoyed it. I heard from a couple of other booktubers that this was really good and really lovely and it absolutely was. So far this is one of my favorites of the year I think. I absolutely loved the main character and the love interest was fabulous. It really felt a lot like a particularly lighthearted Jane Austen plus a lot of fairies and it was just wonderful. It felt like such a good cozy fantasy read. It is the first in a series, but all of the books are, from what I can tell are like standalones. So you don't have to continue the series in order to find out what happens to this particular batch of characters. I'm definitely going to be trying out the other books in this series, but I have my doubts about how well they'll hold up to this first one just because this one was so great and I really loved the particular characters. I loved the setting. I loved some of the struggles that they were in and the kind of conflict 
of the story. I really loved that and sort of the reflections that the main character makes on society because of that struggle. I really enjoyed those and I don't know how another book is going to hold up as well to that one just because I know it's you know got to have a different conflict. So we'll see but I am excited to check those out eventually. I'm not in any rush since it's not actually like part of a storyline series but I'm excited to check those out as sort of a comfy, cozy read that I know that I can go back to. And that was everything that I read in March. I feel like overall it was a good reading month. At first I was thinking that I wasn't going to read as much. I had a lot of things come up in April, so it was definitely a weird month and I didn't really feel like I had as much time for reading. But I ended up reading four books, as you know, and that puts me on track for my reading goals for the year. So I'm pretty happy with it. I I was overall pretty pleased with the quality of stuff that I read. Yeah, overall, it was a good reading month. I hope your reading month was just as good, if not better. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. And most importantly, I hope you have a wonderful night, universe.